So welcome to part two of our Hippo work pack in year four this week. Here's just a front cover for you to have a look at. Obviously got our four year groups email addresses, just a list of what we've included and a lovely picture of a hippo. Okay, so here is the text that I read in the first video. Here's your vocabulary section at the top and the questions that you're gonna be answering. There are a few more questions this week Try and keep you busier for a little bit longer. And also, uh, hopefully you're gonna read a little bit deeper into the text. There's a nice extension question at the end, which does ask you to please give evidence from the text to back up your answers. Here is the rest of the text. Your lovely picture of a hippo. After that, we have the questions for your second piece of text. This is also about hippos. This is a non-fiction text with a map and some facts at the top, some more key vocabulary for you here, 10 questions and one just a little bit different, but one that I know you are all very used to seeing as we do it during George Spicer Reads. Okay, on to the next page, we have our day one maths problems. So you've got 15 arithmetic questions and you might have noticed that we got some addition, some subtraction, multiplication, division, and fractions. If you need any help with these, on the George Bicer YouTube page, there are lots of videos from Mr. Cone with maths. Year three have put out some very good videos uh, showing you how to do some column method. And Mr. Iwanu last week also did some uh, maths problems on his videos. So you can always go back and check those out. Then we have some hippo word problems and an extension at the end, which I'll be very interested to see. You're coming up with your very own hippo word problems, because I had to come up with these and I know that wasn't easy to do. So I really look forward to seeing what you're able to come up with. And then we have day two as well, which you will notice again, addition questions, subtraction, multiplication, division, and some fractions, which everyone in year four is able to access. And I really hope you're going to enjoy having a go at these questions. And then there's some more hippo word problems for you there. Again, if you need any help, either email your teachers or talk about it on Teams, or you've got the videos you can look at on YouTube. Then our next page, we have our SPAG questions. Our first section, I'd like you to write these out in your best handwriting. Correct the spelling, correct the punctuation, there might be speech marks, all those things that we do on a Friday in our SPAG quiz, and you should know how to do. Then we have our word class section, which I'm going to be going through in a minute, just so we can recap on how we go through our word class uh, problems and solve that. And then our third section for our SPAG is pronouns. If you don't know what a pronoun is, then there's some... Uh, Googling you can do for that, or you can discuss that with your parents, okay? Always good to learn something and educate your parents, but I'm pretty sure everyone is going to be really good at their pronouns. So, let's have a look at word class. So, I've written out a simple sentence with a wide range of word classes, and we're just going to have a read through this. So, the small dog sat quietly on Olivia's lap. You may know one of these words already and what word class it goes into, but we're going to work from left to right because that is the best way for us to do it to try and solve any problems we might encounter. So the word the. Think now, what do you think the word the, which word class it goes into? Okay, the word the is a determiner. Okay, this will either show us who or what a noun is pointing to or talking about or it may quantify how much of something there is. So obviously the is our determiner here, but we also have other determiners like this, some, my, and any number, because it is pointing to or showing us a noun. Okay, the next one, small. Who could tell me what word class is small? Small is an adjective. This is because it gives us more information or description about a noun. 
if you didn't know this was an adjective, if you looked at the next word, you think if this describes a noun, what do we think will come after it? Correct for everyone who said a noun. So a noun is a person, animal, place or thing. And we know that a dog is an animal. So therefore, it's a noun. It's being described by our adjective. Next word, sat. Sat. Well, I know that sat is a verb. It's a doing word. You're probably sat down right now. If I asked you to be sat down, you could do that. So you know if you're doing something, it must be a verb. Quietly. If you've sat quietly, that tells me the word quietly is describing the sitting. And what words class do we know that describes a verb? Correct, it's an adverb. Adverbs describe verbs, often end in ly, but not always. Next word, on. So if it's on something, that tells me the position. It tells me the link between the dog and what's going on here, because the position is on. So therefore I know it is a preposition. Olivia. I've used this name because we've got lots of Olivia in, in year four. Olivia's. So Olivia, yes, you're right. That is a person, but it's a name. So it doesn't just make it a noun. It makes it a proper noun. And lastly, lap. I know you can't do lap and it's not describing a verb, but it is describing or coming after Olivia's. So Olivia owns her lap and it is a noun. Okay, it's a thing. It's a part of your body. Okay, hopefully that's helped. And now when you do your hippo word classes, you should be able to think about that for both of these parts. Okay, moving on. Next, we have some topic ideas. Got one, two, three, four, five, six different ideas there with some good hippo uh, websites here with lots of facts on there's some arts and crafts activities i found a website here if you can find your own website any hippo art activities you can do i would love to see i'd be really interested to see what you can come up with and create really looking forward to some emails showing me what you've come up with and then our last page is our writing task so I would like you to write a third person narrative similar to when Hippo was hairy. So you need to pick a different African animal for your story and then come up with something that goes wrong or changes about the animal. If you remember back to year two, we wrote our own Tinker Tales and I know lots of children in this year group loved Tinker Tales. So I've put the website here for Tinker Tales. You might want to go onto that website or just Google it. And you find some stories to watch and they will help you with a bit of inspiration for your story. I don't want you to copy, but by all means, magpie some of those ideas that will help you with your writing. You need to have an introduction, a problem, a resolution and an ending. Please do not make this last for 10 minutes. You should be able to stretch your writing out over three or four days, maybe do a different section every day and make it really rich and interesting for the reader. Okay, so your success criteria, I want you to use a range of powerful adjectives to describe your character and setting. Conjunctions, especially our heat conjunctions everybody in you for. Fronted adverbials, so a long time ago, that afternoon, the next day, keep the story moving forward. They help us remember it's a story and not just a piece of writing that's taking place in one time. I want you to move your story on. And the last, if you can fit in speech, that is your extension. I'll be very impressed. Anyone who remembers the rules of speech. Okay, I hope you enjoy your pack for this week. And I really look forward to seeing some of the answers and things that you come up with from When Hippo Was Hairy. <laughs>